the zone that I'm in when I announce the fight, I like to call the buffer zone. And the reason for that is because I, I see all the other announcers that work with tremendous respect for all announcers that enter a ring or a cage and do what they do. But I feel that I'm different in respect to the fact that I am probably the most passionate, emotional announcer that works. And the reason for that is I have tremendous respect for these warriors that I'm about to announce. Tremendous respect for the training, the lifestyle, the task at hand. It's the loneliest sport in the world. And I want to introduce these warriors the way I would want to be introduced if I was about to go out and lay my blood, sweat, and tears on the octagon floor. Come on. So each fight I announce throughout the evening builds and builds and builds to the crescendo of the main event. And at that point, whether it's 20,000 Brazilians screaming, it's time with me when I say it, I don't hear it. I don't hear anything. I'm so focused on the eye of the tiger that it's just me and the fighter at that point. And it's my job to get them going and to enhance the audience as much as possible watching. It's really that simple. <laughs> If I didn't have all the background that I've had in martial arts, my own goes in the world of fighting, whether it's in a ring or out of a ring, um, just my appreciation and watching boxing since I came out of the womb because my grandfather was champion of the world and my dad had me watching boxing and training me in boxing techniques even at the age of five on. Um, if I didn't have all this background and training and understanding of who these warriors are and what they did to get there, there's no way that I can announce the way I announce. And I don't think anybody that is just coming in as an announcer without any kind of training could even understand, maybe even possibly appreciate where I'm coming from when I say that. People know my famous brother, the legendary icon, Michael Buffer, known for his famous let's get ready to rumble phrase. He is the one that brought attention to the ring announcer. When he started some 30 years ago, he brought this whole debonair image into the ring and uh, really lit it up. And of course, as Mike Tyson became popular, he became popular. But what a lot of people are not aware of is we didn't grow up together. I was watching TV back in 1987, and out came this, I'll call pretty boy in a tuxedo doing you know these amazing announcements. But on the screen below him, it said buffer. And I'm thinking to myself, whoa. I called Don King's office. I called Bob Barham's office. I called HBO. I tried to find out everything I could. Lo and behold, long story cut short, a year and a half later, my dad admitted to me that he had had a child during World War II during a brief marriage, which I never knew about. And he last saw that child when he was two and a half years old. That child was raised under a foster name. And then when he went to the Army at 20, the Army said, no, that your birth certificate says you're Michael Buffer. You're Michael Buffer. So I met with Michael and I said, look, Michael, I want to make you richer and more famous than you ever dreamed. I want to sell my two companies. I'm going to quit with the money I have in the bank. I want to be your manager and your partner. And I guarantee you I'm going to make this happen. Plus, I want to announce. We agreed to let that happen. He asked me one thing. He goes, how are you going to do all that? I said, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Because if I'm going to give up what I have now to make this happen, believe me, I will make it happen. But I do want to announce, and we agreed that I wouldn't announce boxing. So I said, that's fine. Don't worry. Something's going to come along. Here we are, UFC. Training in the martial arts teaches you discipline. It teaches you respect. It teaches you to understand leadership and direction. And it teaches you to test your own physical and mental abilities at levels you've never tested them before in your lifetime. For me, I tested my physical and mental abilities in the world of surfing. I've tested in, the, in other worlds. But the test that I had to go under as far as martial arts and where I train and, and to the level I took my martial arts training, it kept me feeling like I was always at my best like I was prepared to adapt myself to any situation that could possibly come in front of me. Not just a fight, but also in business. And I applied all those techniques. I apply a theory of fighting to everything I do in life, whether it's how I run my business, whether it's how I run my relationships, or whether it's how I run my training in the world of mixed martial arts or martial arts. I think it's an all-encompassing uh, mental awareness, and I apply it to everything I do.